Hey guys, today I want to talk about the new strat people are calling the Riven Cheese. It's not actually a cheese, so it's not something that should be patched. We ended up doing this with a 576, a 579, and the rest 580 and above. But there are some other factors that played into this. I can safely say you want to have everyone on your team as close to 580 as possible. The DPS is tight for this strat. The goal is to have everyone pile up in the same room and get the boss to critical damage the first time she appears on your side. This skips a relic, the cleanse, the eyes, the callouts, and the lifts. I ended up getting three Sherpas this run. You need to stack as many buffs as possible with two debuff applications. This strat requires that you have one Well of Radiance and two Hammer Strikes, aka Melting Point. Instead of two Hammer Strikes, you can also use one Hunter to apply two Shattering Strikes. A shattering strike is when a hunter crouches and gets a precision kill to activate flawless execution, and then that hunter melees the boss to apply a melting point. After 6 seconds, that hunter would then melee the boss again to apply a second melting point. If using hammer strike, I aim for the chin and then go back for DPS. You should also have the warlock run Luna Faction Exotic Boots and use his Guiding Flame buff. Guiding Flame is when the warlock uses his melee on an enemy for a 25% increase in damage for 6 seconds. Don't use Banner Shield. You lose out on DPS if you do. There are tons of ways to maximize your damage output with this strat. For buffs, we need Well of Radiance and Warlock Guiding Flame Melee. Use it on a Scion. Debuffs, we need two Melting Points with two different Titans or two Shattering Strikes from one Hunter. Weapons, everyone needs any Rocket Launcher with Cluster Bombs. We can maximize that damage, though. A Rocket Launcher with Impact Casing will do an extra 10% on Impact Damage, that's 2,000 extra damage before buffs and debuffs. So look out for any rocket launcher that has impact casing as a perk in the magazine slot, as well as cluster bombs. Second note on rocket launchers, add a boss spec weapon mod. This adds 7.8% damage to the weapon. I'm not sure if that applies to cluster bombs though. And lastly, make sure your rocket launcher is 580. The individual attack value of your rocket launcher does matter. If your rocket launcher's attack is under the enemy's power level, it will do less damage, so make sure you infuse it up to 580. Secondaries. After you run out of rockets, you can use snipers to keep up the DPS. Enough about weapons. What about armor? There are two things to look out for on armor. The rocket launcher reserves perk and the Riven's Curse armor mod. You can get rocket launcher reserves on your helmet, chest, or class item, so put those on. That should increase your overall DPS. You can have at least 8 rockets, but I haven't seen anyone with 9 yet. If you can get it with Riven's Curse, that's a 5% buff to damage for each armor piece. If it's not a Reverie Dawn armor, you can also put on a Transcendent Blessing armor mod. It does the same damage buff, but without the curse, making it the better option. Let's talk about supers. If you aren't doing the debuffs, Celestial Nighthawk with Bottom Tree Gunslinger is the best for hunters. You can pop that right before you start rockets. You can use hammers on the final stand for some DPS, since she doesn't have any eyes. And another Well of Radiance isn't bad to have for final stand. Whatever you have left over, use on the heart. Maximizing your gear with 6 people could take a while. If you don't need any extra DPS, you don't have to worry about it. Let's talk about the run. Everyone starts on their plate. When everyone goes down, everyone runs to Crystal's side. If Riven shows up there first, use the rocket to suicide and try again. You only want her there for DPS phase. Don't worry about trying to salvage the run by getting to the other side. She shows up on the other side first, clear out enemies and wait for her to come for DPS. You want to kill everything until the last couple batches of Scions come out. At that point, you want your Warlock to drop a healing rift. If everyone stands in it, the Warlock should have a second rift to place right after the first one disappears. This can keep everyone alive while leaving the enemies for the Warlock to punch and the Hunter if doing Shattering Strike. Shoot for the mouth. Now the amount of damage that Cluster Bombs do depends on how many blow up on the boss. Most of them hit the boss, which is why they out-DPS the Sniper Rifles. Do not hit any eyes during the DPS phase. After you burn Riven, do the final run. Then you'll have to do DPS for the final stand. That's where your Sniper and remaining Supers come in handy. And lastly, go in and destroy the heart. Overall, this is a cheesy strat, and it's easy. After doing Riven normally three times, I have to say that this requires little to no coordination. However, maximizing your gear, as I mentioned earlier, is very important to kill the hardest boss in the game within 15 seconds of DPS. 
That's pretty much it, guys. Apply buffs, 2D buffs, use cluster rockets, get rockets reserve armor, and throw some odds on your gear, and Riven is down for the count. Cheese forever, Guardian.